Uh, insulin wants to tell things to grow, but bones can become insulin resistant. Joints can become insulin resistant. Um, one of the interesting things about uh, the joints is that we have to have the joints making this fluid to kind of keep the joint greased. Right. And those cells that make this fluid are, are very uh, poorly vascularized. They don't get a lot of blood. And so they, they don't get to see a lot of oxygen. And so they are, they are relying more heavily on a process called non-oxidative glycolysis. They need to use glucose and a lot of it. And if they become insulin resistant, their access to glucose becomes compromised, thereby compromising the joint because they wow. don't have enough energy. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. All right. Now, last, last bit here, and then I'll be done. Um, they, the, the hormone pattern, and that's table three. So they found that I already mentioned the significant drop in insulin um, in the low-carb group despite eating twice as much protein, and they were eating three times more fat. Um, glucagon actually tended to go up a little bit. It did, it did not reach statistical significance. The error was too much, um, but it tended to go up. Testosterone didn't change. Um, and then I, I don't want to get to cortisol yet. So IGF-1, uh, remember, these guys were eating two times more protein, right? And the, the typical thinking is, so IGF-1 is relevant because people who don't like protein or who are afraid of dietary protein, they say, the protein's going to cause cancer, and that's going to be because you give it an increase in IGF-1. Because IGF-1, insulin-like growth factor 1, is a factor that is implicated in, in help, uh, facilitating cancer growth. They were eating twice as much protein, and their IGF-1 didn't change. It literally didn't change. Hmm. Not, not, not even one single value point throughout the length of the study. And then let's get to the cortisol, finally. One thing that was so interesting here, well, first of all, cortisol did not significantly change and tended to go down by a lot, actually. But the, the standard error was massive in this study, which I think um, creates a bit of a problem. But the sum of it was no significant difference. It did not go up and, in fact, tended to go down, but it was not statistically significant. So directly challenging the idea that a low-carb ketogenic diet is going to stimulate your cortisol. Now, I told you guys I was going to reference one other study. Let me just mention it quickly. This is a study published last year, actually, in 2019 in the journal Nutrition Research. Uh, the PubMed ID, and you guys can look it up with this, it's 3080 3508. This, in contrast, looked at more at obese humans and put them on a low carb diet. And there were a tremendous number of takeaways, including incredible weight loss, incredible improvements in lipids, great reduction in insulin. Um, they did find a difference in cortisol. And so let me briefly share that. From baseline until week two, the women. The female group, not the men, the women, had a statistically significant marginally. It was less than 0.05 but above 0.01, so a marginally but still statistically significant increase. And then by week eight, it was gone. Wow. So at week two, not in the men though, no significant differences in the men. In the, women, in the female group, at week two, there was a slight, and I mean like a tenth of a point in the cortisol. It was slight, but it, so whether it's meaningful or not is debatable. It was statistically significant at week two, but then it was gone at week eight. So maybe, is there some truth to the claim that a low-carb diet will raise your cortisol? Maybe. In this one study in the women-only group, at week two there was, but as it continued, it was gone. And that might be just reflective of this transition phase. That's You've done change. something very different, yeah. and maybe you do need a little more of those gluconeogenic hormones, like cortisol, for example, to help the liver keep the glucose normal in this transition phase. And then you've adapted over the next few weeks and everything has gone back down to normal. Ate it and summarized, easy to share with loved ones. The description below the title for this video has these summary points.